Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today I want to talk about creativity and artistic expression. And you guys know, I think we tend to see art in a very one-sided way. I think art is, and Jung was very clear about this, the pursuit of something that is meaningful or something that is significant. And if you're an introvert, often that thing tends to be inside. There tends to be something inside that you're searching for that you think is significant. You know, you try to pull it out. You try to draw it out of yourself. You try to search and you try to kind of... It's like kind of pulling out an invisible string inside of you. You believe there is something inside of you that you're trying to create that you think is significant. But this is not an easy process. And you pull things out and you try them out and you say them and you kind of feel like no this is not it this must be deeper you know there's this thought <laughs> inside of you no it wasn't that this was not what i was made to create this drawing i created was not what i saw inside there must be something else and you search and you search and you search you know that is of course uh, very key to the creative process the key to the creative process is the search for something that is of significant unique value to the world and uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I believe creativity is such a dangerous, threatening experience. You know, the question is, why do we have war in the world? Why do we have violence in the world? And the reason is because we don't understand the significance or meaning of life and of the people and of the things around us. We don't understand why they are significant and why they hold meaning. And why do we feel that way? Why don't we understand that thing? Well, it is because we haven't find we haven't found what it is that is significant. We haven't actually started to pull out what's inside. We haven't actually started to go and actually look around us. We haven't actually opened ourselves to meaning. In fact, we've done the opposite. We've shut down the search for meaning because we believe that it is a pointless pursuit. And you know, the creative type has been investigated from so many angles. It's been investigated in the Enneagram, often under the Enneagram Type 4. And often it's said that this is the creative type. It's not the only creative type, but it is the type at heart most associated with creative investigation in, in the search for meaning. And it is that often these types start out feeling that there is a lack of significance or that there is a lack of meaning. There is something or you want something, you desperately need something that is significant or of meaning, but you haven't found it yet. And that's the frustration of the four, the frustrated artist, the tormented artist that often is the starting point, you know, of growth where you're kind of in between being actualized and spiraling downwards. And in all of this, there is a question, a very important question. Honestly, what would a world without art or creativity or this search of meaning look like? I believe we have seen this already in the emergence of Hitler. And um, Hitler was a creative type. He started out a creative type. He started out as a tormented artist. And that is like the question, what? was it that drove him off the edge and often that is what I call the spiral of rejection for an artist you know that spiral of feeling like your art and your creative process isn't leading anywhere it's not giving you anything it's not leading to something it's not making or giving yourself a sense of meaning you're creating but you're not getting anywhere or getting anything from it you're being rejected from by it people are telling you you're stupid and that you should pursue something more <laughs> important such as getting a job or getting a steady income or so on and so on and people keep on telling you they're often so worried you know they come to you and they go like but how will you support yourself if you are an artist how will you support yourself and they come to you and they tell you this and then they don't re what they don't realize is how difficult it is to not be an artist. If you are an artist, if that is where you start out, and that's very important when you think about the Enneagram, it's you can't change what you have been given. You can't really question what it is that you are feeling or experiencing. If you are experiencing something, if you feel a certain way, it is very difficult and often a very bad idea to question that feeling. I should not feel this way. I should not think this way. I shouldn't see things this way. Because often it is just the starting of a quest. 
How you feel is the start of a quest. Every time you feel a certain way, don't say it's stupid. Say it's the start of a quest. And then ask yourself, where is this quest leading? Realize that the easiest way to get past something is to get through something. And that means truly going in, truly getting on this search for significance, truly getting in touch with yourself and what it is that is meaningful. I believe that introverts often suffer from this creative depression because they are told not to go in, not to search, not to be engaged with this. They are told to be pragmatic, you know, to uh, focus on real life matters, to focus on real things of material value that can be clearly explained to other people. I want to be a secretary. I want this much in salary. I want to have this work. I want to do this thing. I want to get this house. I want to have, you know, that queer, clear quest of material meaning. I think the material meaning really absorbs pretty much everything we do today. Everything is about material meaning. Everything is about making money. Uh, when I search for jobs today, most jobs are about money. Most people work for money. Most people work for material gain. And that is a key thing. We don't see the job necessarily as that meaningful. But we do look at the salary. How much do they pay me for doing it? And that's also such an important trend in movies and storytelling. You know, most artists that decide to stop being artists, most artists that don't realize they are artists, that go into work, that decide to focus on material gain, are deeply unhappy. We know them, we've seen them at work. You know, it's that guy sitting in the corner, dark eyes, gloom in their face. It's that person, that annoying person, you know, that's sitting in the corner and they all they think about is like, oh, this is meaningless, why am I here, what am I doing here? We've seen them and we know them, we know exactly who they are. We've seen them in 500 Days of Summer, We've seen them in all kinds of movies, TV shows, and television. The people that aren't going on that quest, the people that aren't going on that journey. And you know, the thing is, I mentioned this, a lot of these people don't realize that they are artists because they have repressed it so much. That call to action, the more you repress it, the more quiet it becomes. You can quiet it out, you can silence it. But it's always there. It's always hanging in the air. It's like having this, you know, how in uh, RPG games, uh, quest givers have this big exclamation mark over their heads. We have that. We all have that exclamation mark over our heads. And it's like this reminder, I want to do this. And <laughs> we're kind of trying to silence that out sometimes because... We, of course, recognize that we don't know what our quest is leading towards. We don't know why we want to go on that quest. We don't know if it will succeed. And we don't know what rewards it will give. It's rarely shown in the quest description how much you will make from it. No. All in all, we don't recognize and we shut down this quest often because of feelings of inferiority. You know, people have this desire to feel good at what they do. And they, instead of, and when you ask a person, are you an artist? Do you like to create? Often they say no, because they reject themselves. You know, it's not about whether I like it or not. Often people don't even think about that. What do I like and what do I not like? What they really think is, what am I good at and what am I not good at? And they say, I'm not an artist. I don't like to create because I don't feel good at it, because I don't feel comfortable showing it to other people, because I feel and worry I will be judged for it, just as I judge myself for it. And that's the heart of that spiral of rejection. You know, the reason I'm bringing up creativity alongside the war and violence and the destruction is because, you know, alongside the creator, at the polar end of the creator, is this archetype of the destroyer. The archetype of the destroyer always has stood alongside the creator, and it's kind of at the other end of the spiral. The person that has, sees nothing of significance, sees nothing of meaning, sees nothing of value in themselves, can soon spiral all the way to feeling like there is nothing of value, nothing of significance, nothing of meaning around them either. And that's why we need to really nurture creativity and make sure we help and encourage and support people on that quest. You know, schools need to have creative hours 
times where people can make, draw, or make music or anything they like. Uh, society and workplaces need to have creative hours when they encourage workers to work on whatever they are passionate about. And we need this because that is uh, the most cheap form of therapy we can ever offer anybody who is at risk of or struggles with depression. That creative hour is perhaps the most rewarding thing you can give pretty much anyone because that is when people start feeling that sense of meaning, that sense of being alive. That we kind of really want in our workers, that we kind of really want in our students, you know. We want our students to have that spark, you know, that spark of I want to do something, I want to achieve something. We want our workers to have that spark of I want to do something, I want to create something. We don't want to live in a world where we constantly have to tell other people what to do and where they silently go, mm, fine, I'll do it, okay then, whatever. <laughs> we want people that are passionate. We want passion, we want meaning, we want significance. And when we see people that are creative, that have this creative gift, we cherish them, we love them for it. And that's the thing, Like we are at risk in all of this of only cherishing those that have created, that have found significance, that have reached significance. And we forget to reward and to cherish and to support those that search for it. And we forget that Einstein was searching for it. He was searching for it. He had a long time when he was going somewhere. People were like, what the hell are you doing, man? <laughs> we have, uh, and we have all been on that quest and we have all been on that journey. and. We are all on that journey right now. And uh, we need to stop giving out rewards at the end of these journeys. We need to start also encouraging and supporting and giving people side quests alongside their journey. And perhaps that is one of the most important things society can do to combat violence, war and destruction around us. Perhaps it is through supporting artistic expression, creativity, no matter the form, that we will finally create global peace and harmony. That's at least my five cents. If you resonate with this, feel free to share it along with your friends and artists and creators. Thank you all for supporting my channel and Take a minute to support these people on Patreon, these artists, these creators out there. Support them by a donation of $1 or more. Anything you like, anything that helps, anything that is and represents this level of encouragement that can help people propel them towards their journey, towards their final destination, wherever that may be. Recognize that in doing this, in encouraging people's treads, in supporting their work, you are also getting their threads, you're, they're connecting their antennas to you and you're, they're giving you something of value, of meaning that you can grab onto and that you can explore and that you can take to your destination as well. I love being around art, I love being around creative people. I love seeing creativity and creative expression. It is my greatest fuel, it is what makes this channel possible, it is what makes my ideas possible, to be around all these gifted people, to be in this amazing community of creators and of creative individuals, of intelligent souls, full of questions, full of answers, full of ideas. And I need to make sure I support this community, I need to make sure it thrives, I need to make sure it survives, because I care so much about its future.